Hello everybody, my name is Karish and welcome back to another recap video and today we're gonna be talking about Honjoni Yata Kawai Hinashi Special Edition. What makes this movie special is that it is based on true stories. It's a collection of six small stories that actually happened with real people. It was scary and I think you all would love this one. On top of everything, if you're new to my channel then make sure to subscribe to this cause this is the best place to find horror from around the world. And with that said, let's dive into the video. So the first story is named True Fear and in the beginning, we see a guy named Hajime. He was a college student but due to COVID-19 he had to stay at home and take online classes. He even lost his part-time job and he needed a cheaper place to live. So one day, Hajime meets a real estate agent. She showed him the cheapest apartment which was kinda dark cause there was a hospital behind it. Except that, Hajime notices a dark spot on the ceiling of the bathroom which he knows at the moment. The agent advised him to not let go this apartment off his hand and Hajime ended up renting it. After a few days, Hajime moved in that place and the black spot was actually there. Hajime know that and we also find out about Hajime's girlfriend Yuki who couldn't come to visit him due to lockdown. Anyway, that night, Hajime's back started aching which was weird cause that never happened before. He goes to bed early but then at exact 11 past 17 pm, Hajime hears a dragging noise from upstairs. He couldn't sleep the entire night cause of that so the next day Hajime goes to talk to the person upstairs only to discover that the apartment above is abandoned. Now at night, once again at 11 past 17, he hears the noise again. Hajime tries to ignore it but then suddenly, his sight falls on a woman's head emerging out of that black spot on the ceiling. Hajime screamed and turned out the lights but the head disappeared. With some narration in the background, it was revealed that since that night, Hajime started to see the head every night. It resulted in lack of sleep, fatigue and nausea. Not only that, but for some reason, his attendance during the online classes weren't marked which could result in him failing the ear. Apparently, since Hajime moved into this place, all the bad stuff was happening to him. One night, Hajime was so scared that he decided not to sleep when Yuki called him. Hajime tries to tell Yuki what was happening to him but he was continuously hearing voices from the bedroom. In the end, Hajime showed Yuki what was in the bedroom but Yuki didn't see anything and suddenly Hajime collapsed due to his back pain. The next day, he had to visit a hospital and when a doctor found out that Hajime is living in that apartment building, he revealed something. The doctor told him about a woman who died in the apartment above his six months ago and the cops didn't know if it was a murderer or an aliveman. The news was shocking so Hajime went and peeked inside the house but didn't find anything unusual. He then went to talk to his real estate agent but she denied the fact that anyone died there which was obvious why she would wanna do that. Hajime was then even scared to go inside his house and at night he was sitting by the door but again around the same time Hajime hears the sound of something being dragged across the floor though this time the sound was louder. Hajime went to investigate and he got terrified as he witnessed the whole woman hanging down from the ceiling. Hajime screamed and ran for his life but to solve this problem once and for all, he went upstairs but the door to the abandoned apartment was locked. He was about to leave when suddenly the door opened on its own and Hajime stepped in. Inside the house was nothing unusual but Hajime found a big black spot on the floor of the bedroom right where the black spot was on his ceiling. And if we run our minds, we can tell that the black spot is by the substance leaking out of a dead body, indicating that the woman was dead for a long time before someone discovered her rotten. Well, as Hajime was looking at the spot, suddenly the woman appeared on the spot, scaring Hajime. There he showed some courage and thought about talking to her and meanwhile, his girlfriend Yuki came downstairs to meet him. Anyway, Hajime tries to talk to her but something happens to him as if he was mesmerized by this woman. But before anything bad could happen, Yuki comes there 
and wake Hajime up. Hajime instantly takes Yuki and runs towards the exit, but the door was locked. The two find themselves locked in the haunted apartment with Soli. <laughs> the spirit came just behind him and scared the shit out of those two. They barely escaped from the spirit and the next day, Hajime went and surrendered his rent agreement. After that day, Hajime didn't step back into that house and he had no idea what happened there after he left. The second story is named Source of the Line of Sight. It begins with a woman named Mina who works for a big company and was a single mother. Her little girl was named Sakura and one day she fell ill. Mina had to rush to the hospital where Mina's mother told her that Sakura now needs to stay in the hospital for 3 to 5 days and with her, Mina needs to stay at night at the hospital. Mina then went to Adara's room where she sees that there's another patient besides Sakura and the other two beds were empty. She takes care of Adara but at night, Mina attends the snoring voice of an old man. She gets up and checks around and thinks that the man beside Sakura's bed might be the one snoring so she ignores it. Next day, Mina takes a day off from work but that night, once again, Mira couldn't sleep because of that snoring. Today, Sakura gets disturbed from the snoring too and then suddenly, Mira gets a tingle and she was sure that something was watching her. She gets up and checks around but no one was there. Next day, Mira was kinda tired and restless but she gets a good news at the hospital which was that the patient beside Sakura got a transfer to another room but the thing was that the patient was an old woman and not a man. Anyway, most old people snore the same way so Mina didn't notice anything strange. But that night, when Mina finished her work and came to bed, she felt that same tingle of someone's sight again. She checked but no one was there. That night Sakura told her mother that she doesn't like this rule and she wanna go home but she didn't mention why. After midnight, Mina once again attends the snoring sound and this time it scared her cause the only ones in the room were those two. Mina went and checked the bed beside her and she was feeling that something or someone is there which she can't see. Suddenly, Sakura's temperature rises and Mina feels like the something is now sitting on their bed. Out of the blue, Sakura points at a dark corner but Mina puts Sakura to sleep. Next day, Mina gets a few days off from the office and means she can stay at the hospital during the day as well. That day Mina's mom also points that there's something strange about that room and this raised Mina's concern. She also hears some rumors about that room being haunted and in the end, she decided to ask for a transfer. She goes to talk to the receptionist but unfortunately, there were no rooms available. That night, as the snoring sound continues, Mina and Sakura wakes up and this time, the snoring sound was so near that Mina could sense the presence just near her. Mina instantly removed the curtains and once again Sakura points at a dark corner and told her mom that she can see it. Mina asked Sakura what was it that she's seen and it was evident that there was something in the room that was alien for him. Scared, Mina put Sakura to another bed when suddenly something touched Mina's legs from under the bed. With a heavy heart, Mina bent down and looked under the bed but no one was there. It was the time when Mina decided to take her daughter home and treat her there. Next day, Mina requested a lot to a doctor to give Sakura a leave and finally the doctor agrees. Mina was relieved. She and Sakura started packing when two nurses were cleaning up the room. The nurses told Mina that they've heard a lot of stories about this room being haunted since the day an old man died in here but they never witnessed anything strange. However, as the nurses removed the bedsheet from Sakura's bed, Mina saw the spirit of that old man who was covered in bandage. The creepy thing was that only Mina could see it and it scared Mina to her death. She took Adara outside the hospital and never returned. The third story's name, Heart Bound in Return. But if you don't know this tale, then I must tell you that after the tsunami in Japan, a lot of people reported seeing ghosts of the passengers who never reached their destinations and this story comes from a guy who experienced that and his name was Heiakewa. Heiakewa worked for a trading company 
and recently he switched from subway to a bus route. One night, he fell asleep in the bus, but when he woke up, the bus was empty. The only person other than him was a woman wearing a long coat holding a red traveling bag. Heakeva ignores the woman, but the second and third day the girl was still there in the same position which made Heakeva think about the woman. Fourth day, when Heakeva exits the bus, the woman exits with him. However, the woman walked faster than Heakeva and ended up disappearing in the darkness ahead. Next day happened the same thing and that time, Heakeva thought about talking to her. He called the woman and she stopped but she didn't turn and resumed walking the next moment only to disappear into the darkness. Next day, the woman was again inside the bus but that day she didn't exit with Heakeva. Heakeva resumed with his normal life until suddenly the woman came walking behind him which was super weird. Heakeva tried to talk to the woman but his phone rings and the woman disappears on the path ahead. Now as Heakeva hung up, suddenly, the woman was standing just behind him. It startled Heakeva and then he ran towards home, but the woman followed him. At times, the woman disappears from behind him, but he could still hear her bag dragging across the pavement. He then knew that the woman was not a human and after running for a while, Heakeva stopped to catch his breath. He thought that he outrun the woman when suddenly, the woman came back and this time, Heakeva fell. The woman walked towards him, saying one thing over and over again, Basutaiwa doko desuka, which translates to, where is bus stop? And it means, the woman died in the tsunami while looking for a bus stop. <laughs> Seeing that creepy looking woman, Hiyakewa screamed and ran for his life, and from the next day, he switched back to the subway and never traveled in that bus again. The fourth story is named Invisible Visitors. The story begins with a girl named Sen, whose mother and brother possesses psychic powers, and one day when Sen arrived home, both her mother and brother were in shock, and according to him, Sen brought something weird home with her. That night, Sen's mom prepared a salt bath for Sen to purify her from any evil attached, and it was revealed that Sen was jealous of her mother's and brother's powers. Anyway, wherever things Sen brought home was strong enough that Sen sensed its presence around her, which was weird because that never happened before. After dinner, Sen was doing dishes when her mother saw something near Sen and it scared her. Apparently, the salt bad didn't work and that was why Sen's mom gave her a protection charm and told her to wear it before bed or the entity will come to bother her. Senja agrees and goes to her room and even wears the charm. After a while of reading, she brushes her teeth, but she could sense the entity near her all the time, although she was just unable to see it. But before bed, Sen puts the protection charm away because you see, Sen always wants to see ghosts, and she thought this is going to be the best opportunity for her. But as she lay down, slowly, she went into sleep paralysis and couldn't move her body. She instantly realized that removing the charm was a mistake and then suddenly, she saw an entity hovering around her bed. For the first time in forever, Sen was seen a ghost but she was hella scared and then suddenly, the entity appeared in its full form and it was an ancient looking man who was sitting in the air. Sen screamed and her mother and brother came there after which the entity disappeared. Sen's mother assured Sen that the entity is gone and even the next day, Sen's mom told her not to worry because for some reason, the entity decided to leave. However, since that day, Sen was glad that she didn't have powers like a family. But she never get to find out who was that guy and why he decided to follow her. Now the fifth story is named Front of the Bath, which begins with a guy named Takeshi who starts to visit a bathhouse every day after work and for some reason it was mostly empty. Takeshi likes to sing a song called Kagome Kagome, which is a Japanese nursery rhyme and he sings it every time while washing his hair. But one day, Takeshi gets a tingle that something is watching him. Though when he turned, he found no one. That bathhouse was owned by an old woman and Takeshi asked the woman why it's so barren in here but the woman didn't give him a response. Next day, after bath, Takeshi was washing his hair 
where we see an entity behind him. It was like those moments when we wash our face and feels like something is just in front of us. However, in Takeshi's case, there was literally someone. Next day, we see that the spread count increases from 1 to 2, and one of those spirits decided to tap on Takeshi's shoulder as he was sinking, and this scared him so much that he ran and asked the owner if she had come inside to prank with him, but the woman didn't respond. Another day, the spirit count increases and this time there were four spirits, and Takeshi was sensing them. The spirits were coming closer, but when Takeshi was turning around, they disappeared. Takeshi resumed his song, but as the song ends, the spirits continued to sing along. Scared, Takeshi turned, and this time, he witnessed a lot of demonic spirits with decapitated heads. Takeshi screamed and passed out, but after a couple of days, he finds out that the bathhouse was once a prosecution center where people were punished with death penalties, and hence, the place was haunted. Anyway, Takeshi wasn't scared and he continued to enjoy his baths every day. Although, he stopped singing the song, and for some reason the spirit didn't bother him anymore. So perhaps there was something in that song that triggered the spirits, but Takeshi would never know. Now the final story is named Stagnant Marks, and this begins with a girl named Emmy, who was given the leadership responsibility to run a team of few girls in a restaurant. Emmy was given the leading role for the first time in her life, and the thing was that the restaurant was new, and its opening night was a few days later. Until then, Emmy and others had to make sure that everything goes right. On the night of the first day, Emmy was in the locker room when she saw a co-worker named Yuki, and she was scared after looking inside her locker. Emmy went and talked with Yuki, and when Emmy looked inside her locker, she was in shock, because there was a big black spot in her locker that looked exactly like a human. It was scary, and to make Yuki feel safe at work, Emmy ended up swapping lockers with her. Next day, some files falls from Emmy's hand, and when she was sorting everything out, suddenly, she heard a low moaning sound from the locker room. She went and asked if there's anyone inside, but no response, and when she opens the door, there was no one. Next day, Emmy went to throw the trash out, and there she met with Yuki. And Yuki was looking towards a really thin space between the building and their restaurant. As Yuki saw Emmy, she walked away. And when Emmy disposed the trash, something knocked it over. But Emmy ignores that. That night, Emmy was in the locker when suddenly the morning sound came back. She checked outside and inside the room, but couldn't figure out the source of the voice. Next day, Emmy and Yuki goes to throw the trash out, but suddenly, Emmy feels heavy in the head. And Yuki looks at the gap again as if she was scared of something. Emmy somehow composed herself, and when she checked between the gap, nothing was there. At night, Emmy was alone in the locker room when the voice came back, and it seemed like the spirit was trying to communicate with Emmy. It was then that Emmy saw a silhouette of a man outside the window, and she screamed and fell. Everyone else came there, but the shadow disappeared. That day, Emmy discovered that the window is laid into the gap which is attached to the jumping ground, and Emmy then knew that the spirit is attached to the locker and the jumping ground. Since that day, Emmy kinda stayed ill for a while. She was restless all the time and couldn't work properly, and Yuki was noticing that. So one night, Yuki talked to Emmy and apologized for giving her the locker. However, Emmy told her to not worry about her like she should as a boss. That night, when Emmy threw the garbage, her head felt heavy, and then, when she was in the locker room, she got dizzy, and then suddenly, the locker opened on its own. And we got goosebumps, and our soul shivered when she looked inside the locker, cause that day, <laughs> there were a pair of eyes on that stagnant spot, and Emmy felt like the entity was ready to crawl out. Suddenly, the morning voice came back, and Emmy heard a voice calling for help. But before Emmy could comprehend anything, she passed out. After a while, when Emmy wakes up, Yuki was near her and she had done some research. It was revealed that their restaurant was built over a grave. And according to Yuki, perhaps the grave is just down below the locker. And that was why this spirit has got her restless. To fix the situation, the two decided to turn the locker into a tombstone 
And that's what they did. They cleaned the locker with holy water and did everything one should do with a restless grave, thinking that it would silence the spirit. The next day was the opening night which was a success and everyone was happy and Amy thought that their little plan worked. But that night, when Amy went to throw the trash out, someone knocked the trash again. Amy fixed everything, but again someone knocks it over and hence her plan didn't work and then suddenly, Amy felt a stare from the gap. She went to investigate and there below a pile of dried leaves, Amy found a grave and this means the restaurant isn't built on a grave. It was the dumping ground that was near it, which was making the spirit restless. And we were scared of the tombstone when suddenly. Our sight fell on a pair of eyes, peering out from the darkness and seeing those, and we screamed and ran away. Anyway, and we finally knew what was the problem, and that was why. And we ended up shifting the entire dumping ground to a different place. He went scrubbed the tombstone and gave the respect to the disease that he actually deserved. And this is how Amy ended up saving herself. And this is where the movie ends. So this was the summary of the movie on Toniyada Kawai Hinashi, which was completely based on true stories. And I hope you understood what I've told you and have liked my video. If you want to watch this movie, then go and subscribe to my telegram. If you want to be in touch with me, then follow my social media. All the links are in the description box. If you like this video, then make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe my channel for more horror content. And I'll see you all in the next one. Till then, stay awake because they'll always see you.